leaves. In the spring of 62, town workers were burning a little excess garbage in a landfill behind the cemetery, as they often did during spring cleanup. Unbeknownst to them, they picked a spot where coal was right near the surface, and it ignited. The blaze was on, and it would burn down through a maze of tunnels to a depth of 100 meters. David DeCock is a reporter who's written a book about the Centralia fire. It burned down and ignited uh, this coal and then burned its way down into the, this vast network of abandoned mines beneath the town. Coal is simply combustible sedimentary rock formed from the remains of plant life. There are several grades. The purest and least common is called anthracite. It's used to fuel the coke ovens that produce steel. Anthracite burns longer and produces more heat than the other grades of coal. It's hard to ignite, but once it's lit, it's difficult to extinguish. Cave-ins and fractures make the mine impossible to seal off. Long abandoned tunnels like this one in nearby Ashland ensure enough oxygen to fuel the flames for at least another hundred years. In untold kilometers of mine shafts, the fire burns out of control. The advancing flames toast the next section of ore along the seam, heating it to ignition. Two of the hazards that accompany the fire front moving through an area are sinkholes, and the second one are the gases. In Centralia, the hills are alive with the smell of sulfur. You, I think you can smell some of the rotten egg odor right now, and that's hydrogen sulfide gas coming off the uh, burning coal. Uh, there are also uh, carbon dioxide and a whole host of... Uh, ethanes and methanes and pentanes and things like that coming off in much sw uh, smaller quantities. The heat is intense enough to produce ripples in the air. Jones and his assistant monitor the ground temperature. We're at uh, about 447 degrees uh, Celsius right now. That probe's only in the ground about a foot. We conducted our own experiment to illustrate the extreme surface heat. We found a hot spot and left a pair of old shoes while Jones continued his tour. The, the roads actually subsided from clear up around the curve up there, where the, where the uh, Buck Mountain Seam outcrops clear down through this area. And down uh, well beyond Tim there, you can see uh, undulations in the roadway down there, probably another 150 yards. The old road into town looks like it's been hit by an earthquake. It's so hot for kicks, people burn logs in the huge cracks in the asphalt. Many of the coal seams below ground run at steep angles or pitches, so when they burn, the ground above collapses. It's called subsidence, and anything on the surface can fall into the pit, including buildings, cars, and trees. The road is actively subsiding. Subsidence came in. For the technical amongst us, we like subsidence. Now, the pitch of the seam in this particular area, that's the, the dip of the seam, is, is very steep. It's probably something on the order of uh, you know, 45 or 50 degrees. Uh, so it's very, very easy to uh, uh, lose a lot of material down the steep pitch in the mine. Back at our shoe experiment, after 20 minutes, the shoes have melted into a bubbling mass of oozing...